Well, what can I say about WWF No Mercy that hasn't already been said? It's still to this day widely considered as one of the greatest wrestling games of all time, but why? After I'd done my review of WrestleMania 2000 for the Nintendo 64, I couldn't wait to sit down and play this again. So let's see if it still holds up. And what is it about this game that makes it one of the greatest of all time? Here's my review of WWF No Mercy for the Nintendo 64. I hope you enjoy. How I ended up playing WWF No Mercy is a completely different story from WrestleMania 2000. Remember I said I had WrestleMania 2000 but I was too busy being balls deep with Here Comes the Pain at the time that I just left it aside. It wasn't until I got bored with Here Comes the Pain that I gave WrestleMania 2000 a chance and it blew me away back then and it still blew me away to this day. After I had my fun with it I knew I had to get my hands on the follow up, No Mercy, and I did. And I'm sure you can imagine if WrestleMania blew my mind then this certainly did too. No Mercy was released in November of 2000, developed by both Ask Mick Ace Entertainment and Aki Corporation, and published by THQ. We get to the main menu and holy moly can we just take a second to appreciate how clean this looks. Not only is it visually stunning, but it's got fantastic lighting too. Now I know it's only a menu screen, but I didn't mention it in my WrestleMania 2000 video about how dark and depressing the main menus were. Here it's bright and colourful and there's stuff to look at in the background which gives a great nod to the time it takes place in too. Isn't that the APA's table where they'd sit playing cards, smoke fat cigars and drink beers? Also, does anybody remember the old VHS exclusives you'd get at the end of the tapes showing behind the scenes stuff from that said pay per view and Coachman would do his wrap up for that event? That's it right there. Not only is it a great menu visually, it is also easy to navigate. Or I should say, it's an absolute joy to navigate. This menu does not only stimulate the eyes but also the ears. Take a listen. Honestly feels like an interactive menu. Why aren't menus enjoyable like this anymore? I reckon I could waste a good 30 minutes or so just jumping from screen to screen to see what sort of tune I can make up. Already this game just gives me good vibes. It's not only the main menu it does this too, when you go into different tabs it changes up also. As much as I loved the soundtrack to WrestleMania 2000, this really takes the cake. It's very smart and well thought out. I thought the roster in WrestleMania 2000 was fantastic and we get all that and more some in here. The base game when you boot up for the first time has 54 playable characters to choose from, with an additional 19 characters hidden bringing the total to 73 altogether. That is huge for the time considering Smackdown 2 Know Your Role on the PlayStation 1 only had 57 all in after unlocking everyone. You'll see a lot of the same faces from the previous game of course with the likes of The Rock, Triple H, Stone Cold, Mankind, Kane and Undertaker. As much as it's sad that some of the old faces have to go, it's equally great to see some new ones added with the likes of Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle. Now I can say bye bye to the one I made in the last game. Also included here is Rikishi, Bubba Ray Dudley, Devon Dudley, Taz, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Steven Richards, Bull Buchanan, Taka Michinuko, Perry Saturn, S.A. Rios and the British Bulldog. We've got a nice selection of Divas too to choose from. All respectable tag teams and stables from the time are all complete here. Now I know it's easy to get caught up with nostalgia and I'm sure everyone will say their era is the best regardless of how crap it probably was to someone else, but this right here is by far the greatest roster in any WWF, WWE, whatever the hell you want to call it game. It's the perfect mix of old and new at the time with a really nice mix of WWF staples along with X, WCW and ECW guys. I remember this time in wrestling so well that it always felt like who's going to show up next. It was absolutely fantastic. They have polished this section up big time. Not only does it all pop a lot nicer with the use of lighting, but when you hover over a superstar they are already off in the distance so you don't have to zoom out to see their whole attire like in WrestleMania 2000. Now we can just spin them round using the analog stick to get a good look of them. They will also do a signature pose if you hover over them for a brief period of time. I'm also happy to see that they have carried over the alternative attires for wrestlers too, and they made sure they got it spot on in this title. Some come with their current attire for the game's release like Kane's sleeveless look, 
but you also have the choice to go for his older looks too. That full black attire though? Not sure what that's about. Same goes for The Undertaker, you have his American badass look, but you also have the choice to go for his Ministry of Darkness look. I really like this as the more choices you have, the better. All in, a fantastic roster. Entrances are here also. I must say they have improved certain aspects of the entrances, but they have also taken a bit of a hit in other departments. In the previous game we got full entrances from the wrestler coming out of the stage all the way up until they got into the ring. For some reason in this though, the entrances only go as far as them walking down the ramp and that's it. It's a shame really because I do know from better footage I've seen of the game they originally planned to do full entrances but they must have run out of time. Regardless of all that though, they do look good. Each wrestler looks like they have a bit of life to them and don't walk and look as robotic as they did in the previous title. That especially goes for entrances when you are being accompanied down to the ring with a manager. With the entrances being as short as they are, they really just cover the basics, with a wrestler coming out, doing a pose and that's it. At least the poses are unique to said wrestler because they could have just given everyone a generic one. Like the previous game, if a wrestler has a prop they'd bring to the ring on TV you're gonna see it here also. You'll see the Undertaker wearing his leather jacket, Rikishi with his robe and even little nods to the time like Eddie Guerrero carrying roses to the ring. They have improved when managers accompany wrestlers to the ring also. Before they appeared stiff and robotic almost in sync with each other, but they've tried to make it as realistic as possible with the manager being slightly behind when walking to the ring. I'm happy to say that if you're either defending or challenging for a belt, that superstar will now wear it as they make their way down to the ring. I know it's pretty small but come on, doesn't it look fantastic? I really don't know why this wasn't included in the previous game. Each wrestler does have their theme song when coming down to the ring but given the limitations of the Nintendo 64, both the entrance theme and videos are heavily compressed. For the most part everyone does have their theme song though, some like Mae Young just have generic in game music which I suppose gets a pass. One thing that doesn't get a pass for me though is Undertaker's theme. He comes out to the Raw is War theme song. This was before his Limb Biscuit rolling theme. I'm sure this was around the time when he was coming out to Kid Rock's American Badass tune. I don't know if this was something to do with copyright or how explicit the song may be to some. If possible, Kid Rock should have taken a page out of Fred Durst's book and let them use it as long as he was a playable character in the game. Set designs look fantastic too in this, a good mixture of stages from 1999 into 2000. These include the updated Raw is War stage for the time, the newly weekly Smackdown show, SummerSlam 99, No Mercy 99, Survivor Series 99, Armageddon 99, Royal Rumble 2000, Wrestlemania 2000, Backlash 2000 and King of the Ring 2000. All look fantastic up close but much like the previous game, once you're in a match it's just a flat resolution picture of said stage in the background. Not a bad thing as it's still easy to tell where you are. Unfortunately the swinging guillotines from the backlash stage do not swing in the game, but it's no biggie really as for the most part they look incredibly accurate to the real thing. Now I kind of slacked on the Wrestlemania 2000 video when it came to the gameplay section and by no means did I do that to downplay how good it really was because it was a fantastic experience. But I didn't want two wrestling videos coming out back to back with the exact same sections being repeated. Plus, I always had in my head that this was going to be the granddaddy send off for the WWF games I'll cover on the Nintendo 64. So I had mentioned in the previous video that Aki was now handling WWF games on the Nintendo 64 and it's no different here. B button delivers strikes, A button is used for initiating a tie up to pull off a grappling move. While in a tie up you can press either A or B to pull off a move. You can also press a directional button while doing so to pull off a variety of different moves. These are weaker moves compared to what you can pull off if you hold either the A or B button in rather than just tapping it. The gameplay is actually pretty in depth because you can also pull off these same commands while also behind your opponent. By tapping the left trigger while in a tie up this will make your wrestler either go behind or in front of the opponent depending on how you started the tie up. Also while in a tie up you can either whip your opponent into the ropes or turnbuckle by pressing C left. If you're next to a table or want to throw your opponent out of the ring, press C up. One thing that I always found annoying about the earlier Smackdown games was after you perform a finisher if your opponent is too close to the ropes you always got a rope break. 
unfortunately in this though you can drag your opponents away from the ropes to stop this from happening which if my memory serves me correctly this mechanic was absent from the Smackdown games for many years after this. While on the subject of downed opponents you also have the ability to flip them on either their back or their stomach which is great for when you're ready to finally hit that swan tom bomb. Those meters you can see at the bottom of the screen are referred to as the attitude meters. The more moves you pull off momentum shifts in your favour. When it's full it will start blinking indicating you're ready to pull off a finisher. Just taunt your opponent by flicking the analog stick and you'll have a brief period of time where you can pull off your wrestler's finishing move. Just get them in a strong grapple by holding down A and flick the analog stick once again and that's you pulled off your wrestler's finishing move. Just like the previous game, if your own finisher isn't enough for yourself, you can steal your opponents by pressing A and B together in a strong grapple. You can also steal your opponents taunts too by swirling the analog stick in a 360 motion giving extra insult to injury. I like the inclusion of being able to taunt while holding a weapon. I know it's small but it's these extra touches that I love about this game. Along with being able to pull off finishing moves you can also execute a wrestler's signature move. This all depends on where your opponent is in relation to how your wrestler can pull off their signature move. Take Rikishi's stink face for example. To pull this off you have to Irish whip your opponent into the corner, perform a strong grapple by holding down A, then flick the analog stick. The gameplay and controls are really top notch and really far ahead of its time when compared to the Smackdown series on the Playstation. The only real issue I faced was the targeting system. It's as easy as pressing the C right button on the controller but you have to be frame perfect for it to work. For example, you can't hit a move and press it right away to target on your next opponent while getting up. You have to be fully standing and not in a move or in the getting up animation which can be frustrating in handicap matches which most of the time results in you getting battered from all angles. More on that in a bit though. There is a blocking and countering system with the shoulder buttons but you have to be focusing on said wrestler to pull it off. However, it works great in single matches. If timed perfectly you'll either simply block a strike or if they're pulling off a grapple move you'll counter it by pulling off a move of your own. This can lead to some great chain wrestling sequences that'll put a big smile on your face and make it hard to believe you're even playing a Nintendo 64 wrestling game. The running system has been improved also. Depending on who yourself or your opponent either sides with or has a rivalry with, someone may come running out to either help you or beat you up. Unlike the previous game though, when this would happen, the action would come to a standstill, zoom in on the entrance while that said person comes running down, slowing down the pace of the match. Not in this though. The music will hit and you will see whoever it is running down while the action still takes place in the ring, which is a nice touch keeping the pace of the match going. All in, for me personally, I think the gameplay is fantastic. It's easy to pick up and play. However, I can see this being the type of game you're either going to love or absolutely hate. Since my previous video, I've seen a lot of people commenting saying how they'd wish these WWF games on the Nintendo 64 could be remade or remastered, and yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. But there's so many factors to take into consideration with this, licensing and copyright being the biggest. It would be impossible to get a roster like this into a game in this day and age, legitimately. Also, as great as the gameplay is, it would be somewhat considered outdated now sadly, and that's not me having a dig at the game before any of you no mercy marks come at me. I think there is a place in the market for a game like this, but I don't think WWE would make that sacrifice for a small portion of their fans who want it. It's just a fact that the gameplay in the games we get now is the standard, as sad as that may be, because personally I've been screaming for a solid WWE game for a long time now and the 2K games that come out these days unfortunately just don't cut it for me. There are plenty match types to choose from in this. Inside Exhibition you can choose from a variety of matches. These include standard single matches, tag matches, triple threat, handicap and cage match all make a return. It's sporting a newer design over the previous all black cage that I believe was last used at St Valentine's Day Massacre of 1999. Still a really fun match. The ability to throw your opponent into the cage head first is back and it's still a button bashing bonanza to escape. Inside tag matches the grappling system is expanded even further. You have the ability to hook an opponent's arm so your partner can get in on an attack. You can also pick them up onto your shoulders. The AI can be a bit iffy in tag matches. For example, here, Devon, you done the hard bit running in, just kick to stop the cover please. Pros and cons to this playing it in championship mode which I'll cover shortly but seriously frustrating if you actually need to win the match. The game supports multiplayer so these things I've mentioned would probably work better with an actual pal to play with. Handicap matches are my worst nightmare in this though. I honestly can't see a proper way to win these matches. 
I tried all sorts, dealing with one guy first then sorting the other out, but you honestly just get battered in this mode. All the ducking, diving, reversals will not save you in this. It's honestly relentless how badly you get beaten up in this match type, which can get very annoying and I'll cover why shortly. Along with the match types within exhibition mode, Royal Rumble makes its return. I still don't think the developers have seen a Royal Rumble match though because like the previous game you can still eliminate opponents by having them go through the middle and top ropes. Also, for some reason you can't choose 30 superstars to participate in the rumble. The number of entrants goes up in increments of 4 meaning the closest you'll get to having 30 superstars in the rumble is either 28 or 32. Odd choice. One thing comparing this to WrestleMania 2000 as I mentioned previously is that the run-ins that occur during matches doesn't have the action stop in the ring while the camera zooms in on whoever is running down to the ring. But in the Royal Rumble match it does. I'm sure there's a logical reason for this but like the previous game it totally slows down the pace of the match. Create a pay per view is back again, more or less like the previous game so don't need to go into detail there. Same goes for King of the Ring mode. Iron Man matches is a new addition that can be played as either singles, tag, triple threat or handicap. Set a timer to your choice and try to get as many pinfalls as possible within that time limit. Great. Now I can watch a counter of how many times I get destroyed in a handicap match. The most exciting new match type has to be the ladder match though. Leading up to this we'd have seen loads of exciting ladder matches from Razor Ramon vs Shawn Michaels all the way up to the triangle ladder match at Wrestlemania 16 and if you think it's going to be anything like them matches then think again. It's very primitive only being able to use the ladder for climbing to win the match and using it as a weapon. Credit for going the extra mile and including it though. You can take the action out of the ring also in hardcore matches, fight backstage in the hallways, dressing rooms, parking lots and even a bar which if you have a great memory you'll notice it's the exact same bar as the one used in the build up to the New Age Outlaws in EPA's match at the Royal Rumble 2000 in which they had a brawl in. You'll find many weapons to use in these areas and also some breakable objects like tables in the dressing rooms and even the pool table at the bar. Great fun all round. The game's career mode, or championship mode as the game likes to call it, now I have been waiting to chat about this. This mode right here is exactly what I want from a wrestling game, a proper in-depth career mode with actual stories attached. Now this isn't like your usual story mode you would have got back then, you know the kind where you just pick a wrestler and start from the bottom and work your way going for a full year's schedule, getting put in what feels like absolutely pointless matches with no stories attached which doesn't really give you a reason to be invested in it. Well this my friend is nothing like that. Here we have a proper career mode, you pick a title you want to go for, choose your wrestler to take on that journey and off you go. Unlike previous games story mode, this one comes with cutscenes full with written dialogue as well to help progress stories along giving me a reason to continue with it. The storylines themselves are pretty enjoyable, some are completely unique while others you may have seen on TV. Depending on how your story plays out you may have the chance to make choices in your story mode with each one having different outcomes, which yet again is pretty far ahead of its time. Another nice touch I noticed was that wrestlers will have different clothes on in these backstage segments which is very much like what we'd have seen on TV back then. Each match you have may have certain requirements for you to fulfil before progressing. Some may be something as silly as putting your opponent through an announcer's table or helping someone to win a match while you're the special guest referee. Some matches you don't even have to win but will change storylines accordingly. You're never actually penalised for what you do which I like because you may see a different outcome as the story develops. However, there are some matches that you have to win to progress the story and for some reason it always seemed to be handicap matches with me which was just a pain and as I said before, I just can't see a legitimate way to win these matches. This is where it becomes annoying, especially in championship mode because like I said, whether you win or lose it doesn't impact you as a player, you'll just see the story develop differently. Some matches require you to win the match and you only have a handful of lives to do it in or else it's game over. These done my head in, so I'd usually just use a cheat code to skip these. As each match can have a different outcome, this will impact what you see in the story. For example, after going through the European Championship mode, the stats say I've only seen 16% of what that story has to offer and that was only after just one playthrough so there's still loads more I need to see in that storyline. It's crazy because we could both pick the same wrestler and title to go for and we'd both experience a completely different storyline. I just love it. It's within the game's championship mode where you'll earn money to spend in the Smackdown mall. Here you can buy props, create a wrestler parts, moves for your created wrestler and actual wrestlers themselves along with Godfather's hole? How much? 
You better be playing the championship mode often because some of these items cost a fortune. Although I must point out some of the wrestlers seen in the mall can actually be unlocked by just playing through the game's championship mode. Another match type I left out when going over the different types was survival mode because within this mode you can also play it to gain cash to spend in the Smackdown mall. It's more or less a Royal Rumble where you can eliminate opponents by throwing them over the top rope or pinning them. I kind of wish you could also make money by playing exhibition matches but I'm sure they probably didn't include this because people would likely find a way to cheese it. All in though, a great experience. I suppose this is a good moment for me to talk about the game's create a wrestler mode. It's been drastically improved over the previous game. Like always, you can create something completely original or someone you wished was in the game but isn't. It's pretty in depth. You start first with a basic template. Name your superstar, choose entrance themes along with a video and then the creative side begins. Each section of the created superstar is cut up to go further in detail when it comes to head, arms, legs, etc. You could choose from a large selection of shirts for your superstar to wear, along with lower attire too depending on how you want your wrestler to look. You can even choose how often they bleed in a match along with how they react to when bleeding. Do they become scared or get more aggressive? Do they have allies and who do they feud with? Which will determine who will run in on matches to either beat you up or help you out. The choices are endless and I'd hate to think of how many different superstars you could actually make with everything on offer here because it really is endless. Like I said in my previous video though, the most I got from these modes was the ability to preview themes and videos which I then used for my figures walking to the ring. A few superstars were cut from the game during development, most notably Big Show who was replaced by Stevie Richards but all his parts remain in the game so if you wanted to, you could create him here. That goes for other superstars too like Draws whose parts are available to buy from the Smack down mall. You can give him his usual look or his look he had during the brief time he was a member of LOD 2000. It truly is endless. You can also edit existing members of the game's roster too. Give superstars even more attire options if the standard 4 wasn't enough for you. All you do is copy them into a new block so the original is safe. This copies their move sets, entrances, then all you have to do is change their attire to suit you. Just keep in mind like the previous game, whatever you change will also impact the game's intro movie, but these can easily be restored to default settings so don't worry about that. It really is fantastic. You can have multiple versions of Undertaker, Triple H and even make Dude Love and an older version of Mankind too if you wanted to. With the amount of stuff here and the right imagination you can make all sorts. You can also make and edit stables in the game too, creating your own rivalries and who partners with each other. So what happened after No Mercy then? Surely after the success of the WCW games in both WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy you think there'd be more to come right? Unfortunately not. There was supposed to be a follow up to it entitled Backlash but that was cancelled. I don't really know the ins and outs of all that because of so many conflicting reports on it. Some say it was nearly complete but apparently the creators themselves say it was purely a concept which never came of anything which is unfortunate. There was supposed to be a Game Boy game to accompany this that would link up with the Nintendo 64 game where you could transfer money to spend in the Smackdown mall which I think would have been pretty cool but like Backlash it didn't come of anything. It would be many years later until we'd get exclusive WWE titles from Nintendo which came out on the Gamecube with the likes of Wrestlemania 18 and 19 and Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 which I look forward to revisiting one day for this channel. From here when it comes to WWE games, they were pretty much exclusively on PlayStation consoles. They were great for the most part but I'd love to see what could have come after No Mercy back then. As you could have guessed, the game was received well by fans and critics and like I said at the start, it's still to this day regarded as one of the greatest wrestling games of all time. The only bad press the game received on launch was due to a whole heap of the cartridges being shipped that were actually faulty. This meant any progress you had made in the career mode or any created wrestlers would be constantly getting wiped meaning you'd have to start fresh. We all know how expensive the hoe is so that must have been frustrating. It actually got that much bad attention that it got highlighted on a UK program called Watch Dogs where they'd call out companies for their wrongdoings and seek justice for the people it affected. Luckily though the problem was fixed quick enough. Anyone who had a copy of the game could take it to their local game store and exchange it for a new one that didn't have this glitch. For anyone looking for a more modern take on this game you may want to keep your eyes peeled for the AEW game that's supposed to be coming out soon. Hideki Yuki Washaki, I think his name is, the director of WWF No Mercy has signed a deal to be a consultant for the game that's been developed by Yuke's and published by THQ which those are the two names you want to hear when talking about wrestling games. I got so many any comments on my previous video regarding this game and who's behind it etc but to be honest I don't really care. 
My hopes for a good wrestling game is so low at this point that for me it's just going to be a case of waiting to see what it's like when it's released. I've been let down too many times over the years with newer games. I just hope the gameplay is good and also has a great community creations which I can credit the new 2K games for having. In reality, I'm not a fan of AEW, so it'll need something like that where I can download wrestlers I watched from my youth from the likes of WWF, WCW and ECW. I do however hope it lives up to the expectations of the proper AEW fans out there. If you are a fan of this game and weren't already aware, there is a massive modding community out there still giving this game life to this day. So many to choose from that incorporate current rosters and old ones too. Different kind of arenas all in their own package. You can get ECW games using the No Mercy engine, TNA, you name it. The modding community have your back and they give you a good excuse and new reason for revisiting this classic game. I was originally going to do a full segment on modded versions but I think the video is long enough as it is. I might cover them individually one day if you guys guys want that though. Look, I loved Wrestlemania 2000 but No Mercy does everything that Wrestlemania did but better. You could call it the perfect sequel. There is so much to speak about with this game that I'm sure I've even missed out here, but it's a great experience all round. The roster is fantastic and represents the time perfectly. It's a shame that entrances got cut short but they did a lot to make up for this with the inclusion of a proper season mode which I'll always appreciate. All in, it's just a fantastic game that's still worth playing to this day and like I said, if for some reason you're bored with it, the modding community will definitely have your back bringing new life to this old game. That brings me to the end of this video. If you have enjoyed, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe. If you didn't like this then please feel free to dislike, either way it lets me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Leave a comment too if you like, I try to reply to everyone and also check out my other wrestling game reviews if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one, see ya!